Back with Dr. James Garner this morning from Persia on Therapeutics. James, morning. Good morning, Andrew. Good to be with you. Yeah, good to speak, James. Uh, an interesting new area for ATL 1102 you've announced this week here. Uh, some new data in epilepsy. Just talk us through it and what it means. Thanks, Andrew. Yes, yeah, so epilepsy is a pretty broad disease. It's really a cluster of many, many dozens of diseases, all with different causes and mechanisms. But there's a there's a group of these diseases where epilepsy is caused by something going wrong in the immune system. And that's really interesting to us because our lead drug, ATL1102, works to modulate the immune system. It's a drug that, that acts on the immune system. And we've been investigating it in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, where the immune system is extremely relevant. But it also seemed really interesting to look at here. So we've, um, we've put the drug into some experiments in a, a well-established model of what we might describe as immune-related epilepsy. And the good news that's come out recently is that the drug seems to work Work. We've seen a uh, in this model system a about a two thirds reduction in the frequency of seizures in these animals, which is which is pretty substantial. And that's better than than certainly any data we've been able to find out there for other drugs. So what this means for us is is a couple of things. I mean, the it, it certainly suggests a potential new use of the drug, which might be of interest to us in the future. Um, and it also, in the meantime, helps to validate. Yet to the drug, it's yet one more data point that shows that 181102, in some fundamental sense, works. It works to modulate the immune system, and that's relevant in potentially a whole host of diseases where the immune system is relevant. So what are you looking to do from here, James? Do you need to do a bit more lab work, or are you considering a clinical trial? Well, look, we've still got a bit of work to finish off with this experiment. So we've put out sort of the the high points of the, the clinical data, seizure frequency, things like that. There's quite a bit of um, lab work is a good way to describe it still to go. They look at samples of the animal's tissues under the microscope, look at how their immune system is working and so on. And we'll probably share that data at a future conference presentation or a, an academic publication, something of that sort. Um, so we've got a bit of work to do to wrap this up. The next step probably in the great scheme of things would be to think about a human trial. We're probably not going to launch that anytime soon in all honesty. I think right now the company is very focused on Duchenne muscular dystrophy. That's um, that that's really the, the one thing we want to get right. So this is something we can we can sort of keep in reserve for future reference. And of course, as the story matures in Duchenne, we start to think more actively about other uses of the drug. This could be really, uh, really nice data to refer back to and to, to, to think about in a clinical context, but probably not for the time being. Well, look, you haven't spoken previously about epilepsy. So this readout did come as a, a bit of a surprise. Any further surprises up your sleeve? Well, if I said yes, it, it wouldn't be a surprise, of course. But uh, but uh, look, uh, I, I think I think this probably reflects a couple of things. The the first is that uh, we are very single minded in the company at the moment, as we've we've often spoken about in, in the last 12, 18 months, this laser like focus on Duchenne muscular dystrophy on the ongoing phase two B clinical trial that we have there. And so so much of what we talk to investors about. Is, is around that. And this is something a, a little bit more tangential, a little bit of a skunk works project, if you like. I think what this perhaps also reflects is that um, our, our preference as a company, our style, our philosophy, is that we like to talk to people about things once we have something solid to talk about. I think many biotech companies talk very aspirationally. They talk about their dreams and their hopes and their wishes. They talk about things that may happen and could be possible. Um, we prefer to talk about things that are concrete, that have been achieved, have, have been done, that are specific and, and real and, and tangible. So we tend to like to talk about this kind of stuff once we've done it, rather than when we're still thinking about it. And we just think that's, that's a, a healthier way to have our conversation with investors. So I, I think there's probably an element of that at play. And look, um, Duchenne is so much our focus, but we are always thinking about other things we can do with our business and with our pipeline. So we, we, do, we do reserve that right to, uh, to surprise people from time to time. 
So speaking of work that has been done, have you got any updates for us, James, on the, the clinical trial here in Duchenne muscular dystrophy? Andrew, it's, it's going well uh, in an operational sense. We, uh, of course, as, as everybody will recall, we, rec we completed recruitment back in May of this year, and we're now lined up for data in December 2024. So it's really all eyes on this December readout. It's only the first of several readouts. We'll have another readout mid-2025 and then a, a final take on the data in the back end of 2025. But for obvious reasons, this is going to be the, the, the big news of the year for us, no matter what we do. So so data in December 2024. As I say, operationally, the study's going really well. We're very pleased with, uh, with how things are going. The sites are, are doing a great job. Um, no, no real issues or concerns. The study is blinded, so we don't have any insight to the data at all. We genuinely do not know which way this is pointing. We'll find out in December, uh, you know, about five minutes before everybody else does and uh, we'll uh, we'll share that information then but at, at least in in uh, every measurable visible sense the study's going great and we're we're really pleased and we're looking forward to sharing uh, sharing that data in december and james just finally while i've got you reporting season now behind us I suppose how does the the rest of the year look for percheron um, Andrew, look, uh, it's it's actually a busy run up to the end of the year. As I say, December is sort of this huge tentpole for us, but we've got a few other things going on as well. Um, we uh, we are looking to wrap up this nine month animal toxicology study, which will be familiar to, to people who've been following the Percheron story. It's been knocking around in the background for for a while. Um, that's pretty much concluded, a, a, except for some formalities and some some dotting of i's and crossing of t's we're looking forward to sharing the results of that with people we already um foreshadowed that a little bit in may where we sort of said that at that point things were looking quite similar to to previous work and i don't think we're going to have a, a radically different answer when we get the final data um in due course but i think that'll be really something reassuring for people to see and um, meanwhile, obviously, we're, we're working in the background on just really trying to get ATL 1102 as ready for prime time as possible. We want to make sure that whatever the, the outcome of the study, whatever uh, interactions we have with regulatory agencies, whatever uh, direction our partner discussions take us in, we're, we're ready to respond. We have the drug as clean and as ready and as complete as it's possible to be. So there's a lot of that kind of work going behind the scenes to, to really get things ship shape and uh, really, uh, really proud of the work the team's doing there. And it's, it's coming together really well. Yeah, getting prime time ready. I like it. James, good to see you. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Andrew. Always a pleasure.